Welcome. Welcome to all to Kentucky's 6th Congressional District. I want to thank all of our witnesses here today and my colleagues who were able to make today's hearing in central Kentucky, the great Commonwealth of Kentucky. I want to thank in particular uh, my colleagues, Congressman Sessions from Texas, Congressman Rose from Tennessee, Congressman Fitzgerald from Wisconsin, and Congressman Flood from Nebraska, all great patriots and friends and colleagues. Um, it's great to see all of you as well, uh, numerous friends and neighbors, especially the financial services industry right here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I see uh, many friends from the banking and the credit union industry here uh, in Kentucky. Thank you. Welcome to all of you for participating today. I want to especially thank uh, at the outset uh, Deirdre Lyons and Mark Lyons. Uh, Mark had to be in Brazil today for the for the company, but to Alltech and all of the leadership at Alltech, um, Brad, thank you for helping to organize as well. Brad Harris, the general counsel. But Deirdre Lyons, I just want to say at the outset, this is her beautiful facility, part of the Alltech family of businesses, the uh, Lexington Distilling and Brewing Company. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, it's altogether appropriate that this is the venue. Uh, Alltech is the venue for a hearing where we are exploring cutting edge innovation because there is no company in Kentucky, my congressional district, I would argue in the country and in the world that is as innovative as Alltech has been over these last uh, 40 years. Uh, Dr. Pierce Lyons and, and his wife Deirdre immigrated to the United States from Ireland with an entrepreneurial spirit and they are literally the epitome of the American dream having built this animal nutrition uh, brewery distilling uh, business empire. And we, we are just so grateful, uh, Deirdre, for your hospitality and for welcoming us here uh, in this wonderful facility. We're very proud of our bourbon heritage here in central Kentucky. And so thank you for all that you do for our community. In this subcommittee, um, uh, I have been honored to have great colleagues on both sides of the aisle. Uh, including Ranking Member Bill Foster from Illinois, who un unfortunately cannot be with us today, but sends his regards. And uh, this, uh, this journey that we're on in financial inclusion has been a bipartisan enterprise, and we appreciate uh, Dr. Foster for his collaboration. And so on both sides of the aisle, there has been keen interest in fostering the prosperity of community banks and credit unions and the businesses that they serve. It is fair to say that there is joint concern that our banking system has been losing some of its dynamism and breadth. We do not want to end up with a barbell banking system with a lot of too big to fail banks, big Wall Street banks, money center banks on one end, and a scattering of small institutions on the other and not much in between. The strength of our financial system in the United States is its diversity. And that's what we're uh, here to talk about today. This hearing is about uh, bank and, and community, uh, community financial institutions, credit unions, partnerships with financial uh, organizations that provide so much innovation. And community banks and credit unions partnering with these organizations that engage in business activities with them are often referred to as third-party vendors. Such partnerships, which increasingly involve vendors that employ innovative technologies, can allow more efficient provision of financial services to consumers and businesses of all sizes. With adherence to pr prudent risk management of these relationships, financial institutions can better serve communities, including facilitating expanded opportunities and inclusion in the form of access to financial services to those who may be less likely to access financial services through traditional bank products. Efficiencies include servicing clients in a timelier manner, improved compliance with legal and regulatory requirements, better management of operational risk, lower cost transactions, reduced friction in payments, and enhanced data protection. As innovation in the provision of financial services accelerates, it remains important that a proper balance be struck between fostering innovation and attention to due diligence to ensure safety, soundness, stability, and consumer protection. At the same time, federal and state regulators of banks and credit unions must not reflexively and unnecessarily stifle innovation, especially if motivated by politicized interests. Unfortunately, that has been what is occurring far too often recently. For example, in June of 2023, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, 
and the Federal Reserve issue final joint guidance establishing principles for all banks under federal supervision to consider when entering into third-party relationships. One Federal Reserve Governor argued that the guidance is yet another part of a concerning pattern by regulators of deviating from a risk-based and tailored approach to supervision and regulation of banks. Furthermore, an FDIC director argued that elements of the guidance will create more ambiguity for banks rather than more clarity, which guidance should be intended to provide. Opaque guidance and rules create more ambiguity, ambiguity for banks. Ambiguity equates to higher prices and less options for consumers. These outcomes are not beneficial for our financial system or for American households and businesses. Following the release of the joint agency guidance in 2023, community banks expressed concerns that it does not provide bright line assurances that certain activity would or would not be permitted and was not prescriptive enough to explicitly prohibit certain activity. The guidance was too vague to provide an executable roadmap discerning what activities regulators would find acceptable or not. Such opacity leads to unnecessary uncertainty, which can impede adoption of some services and innovation and could lead to regulation by enforcement. Unprincipled regulatory agencies can and unfortunately do in some instances use regulation by enforcement to execute agendas outside of their mandates, therefore evading the intent of Congress. Unelected bureaucrats need to provide clear rules and be responsive to the actions they take that impact the banking system. I look forward to hearing about the experiences of today's witnesses, along with your views and suggestions for improving the financial landscape throughout the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the United States. And these field hearings, I will say in conclusion, these field hearings are not common, but I think are extremely useful where Congress actually comes to you, the American people, in the heartland of our country to get a real world view of what uh, is possible in the area of financial innovation. And I think that's very refreshing instead of just relying on experts inside the Beltway.